Another example we can have a look at is changing the image of the pink square after dropping it onto the green one. This could be useful when you have a game where you want to combine items that makes one of them look different. For example, maybe you have a pair of dirty glasses that the player can clean with a cloth. When the player combines the cloth with the glasses, they change from dirty to clean. In this example, we want the pink square to become blue instead. The documentation says there's a function called setChild available to a drag, which can be used to change the displayable that makes up its visual information. So this will be the function we want to use. So after we have snapped the pink square to the green square, we now change the child to contain a blue square instead. To do that, we supply the setChild function with the new solid displayable and set it to have a blue color. Since it should have the same size as the original pink solid we added in the screen, we'll set this to have a size of 250 pixels. Now let's have a look at this in the game. So if we drag the pink square on top of the green square and release the mouse button, we can now see it turns blue. Because we have now changed what the image is of this drag, it would be good to also change its name to reflect the new look. Since we have named our drags according to the color of the image, we now want to rename it to blue instead of pink. And to do that, we just update the drag name property. One last example we will look at with this property is how to create a new drag as a result of dropping a drag onto another. For this, we are going to need the drag group variable containing the drags we created earlier and add the new drag to it. As long as this drag group is present in our screen, any new or removed drags will be reflected in the game as well. To do that, we can use a function called add, which is available to drag group objects, and specify the displayable it should use as its child. First, we'll remove the two dust lines inside the second if statement. Then we'll create a new drag by creating a new variable and call it something descriptive, like blue drag. Then we'll use the drag class, like usual, and supply it with a child displayable, which will be a blue solid. Then we'll also align this to the right of the green drag. Any drag properties you want for this drag should also be added, and for this example, I've added the drag name, drag race, and the dragged properties. Now we just need to add this new drag to the drag group, so we'll grab our drag group object, which we called my drag group, and then we'll use the add function on it and supply it with the new drag. We also need to make sure the pink drag uses the dragged property and specify this dragged func function if we haven't done so already. When we run the game and drag the pink drag onto the green drag, we can see a blue drag popped up to the side, and this drag can also be dragged around like the others. One thing to keep in mind is that every time you drop the pink drag on the green one, it will keep making new blue drags. If you don't want that, you can prevent it by, for example, setting the droppable property to false on the green drag afterwards. You could also remove the pink and green drags completely after being combined. For that, you can use another function available to drag group objects called remove. You use this function the same way as the add function by simply referring to the variable containing the drag you want to remove. In this case, we'll remove the pink and green drag, so we'll add two new lines using this remove function. Then when we run the game, it will look like this. So these were some examples of how you could use this property to do different things with your drags. The drag join property will be useful when you're creating your drags with Python code like we did earlier with the variables we made. That's because this property requires a custom Python function where you will specify the drags you want to join at the same time. So in this example, we're going to continue using the drag group object in the screen. Then we'll create a new function for use with this property inside the init Python block, where we also have the other function, and I named this function join drags. The function requires one parameter that contains a drag that is being dragged, and I named this dragged item. Inside the function, we can now decide which other drags we want to drag together with this one. For this example, I want the yellow drag to be dragged at the same time as the green drag. To do that, Rempy expects us to use the return statement together with a list containing tuples of other drags that should be dragged together. So for this, we can therefore write return, then two square brackets to make a list. Inside the brackets, we'll add all the drags we want to drag inside of tuples together with x and y offset values which determines how far away the drags should be from each other. The first drag we want to drag is the green one, which triggers this function to run. So we can refer to the dragged item variable as the first value. For this example, I won't offset the drags, so I'll set the x and y offset values to zero, and we'll see what that looks like soon in the game. 
Then we want to add the yellow drag as well, so we'll add another tuple, and this time refer to the yellow drag variable. I don't want to offset this one either, so I'll write 0 and 0 here as well. Now we just got to remember to add the drag joint property to the green drag that we created using a variable, and reference this function as the value. So now when the green drag is being dragged, this function will run and should join the two drags together. Let's run this example now and see what happens. Here, when I drag the green square, we can see the yellow square suddenly appears on top of it and follows the mouse around as well. And that simply means that it's working as intended, as both squares are being dragged at the same time. Now, if you don't want the drags to overlap, you'll need to adjust the offset values for the return statement. As written in the documentation, the x and y values are for offsetting the drags relative to each other. So in this example, let's try setting the yellow drag to be offset to the right of the green drag instead of on top. To do that, we can set the x offset value to its entire width plus 50 pixels for a total of 300 pixels. Now when we run the game, we can see that the yellow drag will now follow the green drag on its right side as it's being offset by 300 pixels. We could also put it on the left side instead by making the offset a negative value. You could also use the different attributes available to the drags, like x, y, start x and start y, when deciding how the joint drags should position relative to each other. This can be done with different calculations, where, for example, the starting positions of the drags determines the distance between them. Now that we have joined these drags together, other functions for some of the other properties, like the dragged func function we created earlier, will be able to access these. In this case, the dragged items list will now contain both the green and yellow drag. Let's have a quick look by printing out the names of the drags in the list. We know that there should be two, since we joined two together, so we can print the first and second items' names. We'll also need to add the dragged property to the yellow and green drag as well for this to work. When we run this and drag the green drag on the screen, we can see we get two messages printed out that shows the names of the drags we joined. The drop allowable property can be used when you want to control if a drag should allow any of the currently dragged drags to drop onto it. This property requires a custom Python function with code that decides on the result and then returns the value true or false. The function for this property will keep running as long as you're moving a drag around on a screen that could potentially be dropped onto the drag that uses this property. Therefore, the function will run before the drag is dropped. To use this property, we first create a function like normal then we add the required parameters, which the documentation says is two in this case. The first one contains a drag that calls the function with the use of this property. The second one contains the drags which are currently being dragged. I name the function drop control, then the parameters current drag and dragged items. As a simple example of how it works, we can do some print commands like we have done before. Let's print out the name of the drag that is being dropped on and the name of the currently dragged item, which is overlapping it. To do this, we use the print command and supply it with an f string, which is a formatted string where we can add variables inside of it. It starts with the letter f, then comes the string with some normal text, and then the variables inside of curly brackets. Then in the debug console, the variables will be replaced with the values they contain. Now we just want to make sure we add this function to the drop allowable property for the green drag only. For this example, we leave out any other properties that calls functions to make sure they don't interfere but I will include the drag name and drag race properties. We'll also make sure we remove the print commands in the dragged func function to make sure they don't interfere. When we run the game and drag the pink square, we can see the console is constantly printing out our messages as long as we're moving the mouse. The same happens when we drag the yellow drag, so we know that the function is working as described.